Cheers, please tell me if you still love me. Charot. <laughs> please tell me if ma putol ko or whatever, ma choppy ko, sa choppy choppy. Okay, all right. And we'll continue with the lecture. All right, starting first with your hetero feeds. Okay, now hetero feeds are intestinal flukes. Okay, so atan siyang established. These are intestinal flukes, meaning these are flukes that can be recovered from the intestine and those that affect the intestine. All right. Now, the most important species are your heterophys, heterophys, and metagonimus, your kogawai. These two species are really small, all right? And the heterophys, the family, are the smallest among the trematodes. Um, Madunga na ko, dears? Okay ra? Or on saman? Yes, sir. Okay ra, sir. Okay, sir. All right. So, nandiyan pa ba kayo? Ah? Basi napatay na mo sa dal? Char. Okay. Nandiyan pa ba kayo? Ah? Nangatulog na. Laban na dira. Okay? Napa mo? Napa, 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 sir. Napa, sir. Napa, sir. Okay, all right. Sige, very good, no? So, uh, alive lang ta, para di po kulo ka on. Amen. Charot. Anyway, ayan. So, the two main important species of your heterophys, your heterophys, heterophys, and metagonimus, you call gawai. So, there are a lot of species of heterophys that can affect man, all right? They have the potential to infect man, pero only two are established to really cause infections to man. And that is your heterophys, heterophys, and metagonimus, your kogawai, all right? Please take note. Now, they attach themselves, again, to the small intestine, and we get them usually from eating raw or pickled na freshwater fish, okay? Now, life cycle is similar to the opistorchids, your um, clonorchis sinensis and opistorchis species, uh, because, again, they can be recovered or they can be acquired by ingestion of fish, okay? Now, pathogenesis, it, it elicits or it stimulates excessive mucus production, and the most common clinical manifestations are similar to that seen in peptic ulcer disease or acid peptic disease. So if a patient na heterophys, heterophys or metagonimus yukogawai na infection, ilahang symptoms kay murag na sila ulcer, no? Peptic ulcer disease or acid peptic disease. All right, okay. So that's for the heterophys. Again, there are a lot of species that could affect man. They have the potential. No, di ba? Murag senior high, maraming potential. May potential pa ba kayo? <laughs> okay. Now, nasa ni potential, but uh, the only species, two species that are established to cause infection are heterophys, heterophys, and metagonimus, yung pong gawin. All right, okay. So we start first with the first one, your heterophys, heterophys. Your heterophys, heterophys is teardrop in shape and is considered to be the smallest fluke that affects man and the deadliest among the flukes that affect man, okay? So, um, later on, medyo magbalik ang description sa smallest fluke. So, ato na na siyang i-reconcile na po it kung sa jimang ita po, <laughs> sa itong i-choose na answer. But again, for now, heterophys heterophys daw is considered to be the smallest fluke affecting man. And again, it's considered to be the deadliest among the flukes. All right. Now, common names, uh, again, very important to say common names of uh, heterophys heterophys. Your von Siebold's fluke. Please take note. I think this was already asked in the boards. I'm not sure kung when, pero already asked niya. So again, I have to emphasize common names ha. Very very important. Nako dapat memorize natin siya by heart. Okay. All right. Kaya usik ang one point. Okay. Now the habitat is of course again the small intestine. Final host kita man. First intermediate host is always a snail. All right. And second intermediate host are the freshwater fish. Reservoir hosts are those mammals that also eat fish, such as dogs, cats, or birds. And again, infective stage mode of transmission, common to all trematodes. Again, metacercaria and uh, ingestion of the fish, respectively. Okay? So, muna siya iyahang information. Again, gahapon was the intro to trematodes, di ba? I have to, I have to emphasize again, for the intermediate host, your trematodes require two intermediate hosts. Do I lang intermediate host? The first intermediate host is always a snail, all right? Para always yun siya na snail. Sa second intermediate host, sila mo differ, okay? Sa second intermediate host, sila mo differ. Pwede ng fish, pwede ng vegetation, mga plants, water plants, pwede ng crabs, okay? Pwede pong another snail, pwede pong insects. Depende on the species, okay? All right, so for heterophys, heterophys, iyahang second intermediate host is your... Um, Fish. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Medyo nakalimutan agad. Alright, so again, common name, Von Siebold's flu. Please take note, don't forget. Alright, okay. Now for the adults, I, as, yan, yan. as you can see, flag can get put in appearance, but it's oval. Alright? Iyahang likod or posterior is much wider or longer or oval, broader compared to your uh, front or sa posterior. As yung anterior, sorry. 
So the posterior is quite uh, oval or broader compared to your posterior. It has a third sucker known as the gonotile or gonotail. And this genital sucker surrounds the genital pore, all right? And this genital sucker is believed to be used for copulation, no? for fertilization purposes, all right? The surface of the worm has spines, all right? And these spines can be used for absorption of nutrients no? from the host or possible for the release of wastes, okay? Now, again, gahapon, ang introduction, <laughs> ipala pa mukha kita. Again, the rest of your chematodes have two uh, suckers. You have the oral sucker and you have the ventral sucker. These suckers are usually used for attachment. Okay? So, if you hindi ka ma-attach dahil yun, baka marami kang suckers. Ay, charot. Or baka mahili kang mag-suck. Ha? Charot. M, M, M. Okay. All right. So, again, all trematodes have two suckers. All right? The oral sucker and the ventral sucker. The oral sucker usually is dira musulod ang food nila. Nila kang mouth. And the ventral sucker is for attachment. So, tanang trematodes, duha ang suckers. Except for heterophys, heterophys. Because na siya third and that is the genital sucker. All right? Now, do not be confused with the genital sucker from the genital pore. The genital pore is present in all trematodes also because this genital pore is where the eggs are released from the uterus of the adult trematode. Okay? Again, a genital pore is where the eggs are released from the uterus of the adult trematode. The genital sucker, all right, is only found in heterophys and heterophys and the genital sucker can be found close to the genital pore. All right? I hope that gets right to show. All right? Uh, yeah. And so, please check yourselves. Baka marami pa yung suckers. Okay? <laughs> Kasi mahili kayo ma-attach. Ay, charot. I think I need to check myself there. Charot. Okay. Ayan. Sige. So, ayan. That's for the adults of your heterophys and heterophys. Again, elongated siya. The posterior or sa likod niya, medyo gifted siya, no? Dako siya sampot. Dako siya globot. Yes. Medyo rounded niya ang posterior. Okay. All right. Now, here are the labeled parts of your heterophys, heterophys na adults. Again, as you can see, the OS is oral sucker. Your pH is pharynx. IN is the intestine. AC is the acetabulum, or also known as the ventral sucker. All right? Ventral sucker. And then the EG, mo rin mga eggs. All right? Eggs that contain or that are found within the uterus. All right? Okay. Eggs within the uterus. So that's for the adults of heterophys, heterophys. All right? Now, for the eggs, your eggs uh, are similar in appearance with your clonorchis na eggs, all right? So, it resembles an old-fashioned light bulb, but the operculum, ayan, nasa taas, they have minimal opercular shoulders, meaning wala kayo makita ng murag, uh, kanang, kanang murag shoulders sa yung operculum or mga protrusions from the operculum, all right? Now, it resembles your clonorchis, as I mentioned, pero, um, again, it has minimal opercular shoulders compared to your clonorchis sinensis. And ang yung opposite, wala siya yung kanyang uh, uh, seated operculum, marag comma, comma, C-O-M-M-A, <laughs> comma-shaped na appendage. So, sa clonorchis, gahapon again sa pre-recorded lecture, na naandin to ang yihang picture. Okay? Ako na lang i-scroll up para mas mag-guess din yung baklang to. Okay, alright. So, for clonorchis na egg, yun ano yung appearance? Ayan, this one. So, as you can see, this is the clonorchis na egg. Klaro kayo ang shoulders, kabantay mo sa taas, sa kilid, di ba? Mag na nilabaw sa upper kilom. That's the shoulders. Mag rim, ayan, ah, rim. And then, ang opposite niya is this comma-shaped, ayan, comma-shaped appendage known as a small nub, alright? And this small nub is uh, absent. Wala niya siya sa imuhang heterophys na egg, alright? But if you look at the appearance, medyo same it's like appearance sa imuhang heterophys na, na egg, okay? Alright, so that's for uh, the egg of heterophys, heterophys, alright? Okay, so again, because they look similar in terms of egg, they could be quite difficult to differentiate, all right? So in order for us to identify, aside from looking at the egg, we can also look or we need to look at other information of the patient, such as history of the patient. Uh, Nakakaon ba siyang fish? Uh, Asa siya gikan, no? Like, did he or she come from a place endemic for heterophys, heterophys infection, etc., etc., all right? Okay, so that's for the eggs of your heterophys, heterophys, all right? Now, for the life cycle, again, as you can see, eggs are released um, embryonated in the environment, diba? So, again, sa introduction sa chematodes, we have a mnemonic for the eggs na mature already when passed in the environment, and that is shock, no? S-H-O-C. So, schistosoma, H, heterophys, O, opistorchis, and C, clonorchis. Again, nanas yung notes, and narapod sa lecture gahapon, all right? So, meaning, when they are laid outside in the environment, the eggs already contains... Um, 
a mirasidium. So, nana siya larva agad-agad. Alright? So, it's already uh, mature or embryonated when passed into the into the environment. Okay? So, shock. S-H-O-C. No? Schistosoma, uh, heterophys, opistorchis, and clonorchis. Now, as you can see, when the eggs are passed in the environment, the eggs must first be ingested by the snail. Alright? Must first be ingested by the snail before the mirasidium hatches. No? So, once makao na sa snail ang egg, the mirasidium inside, diba, the first larva, will then uh, move out or go out of, into the snail, and then the mirasidium will then develop into the different larva. Your Miss R.C. Munoz, okay? So you have again mirasidium, your sporocyst, red yi, or red yi, and then cercaria. The cercaria will then uh, go out of the snail and then go to the fish, all right? And then inside the fish, may mo siyang metacercaria, all right? And then the metacercaria is now what infects humans and other mammals or animals that eat fish, okay? And again, these worms will reside in the intestine, okay? So, dito sila mo mature. Alright, okay? So, nagets na. Hopefully, naintindihan lang. Okay, alright. Sige. So, that's for the life cycle of heterophys, heterophys. Again, second intermediate host are freshwater fish, okay? Now, for the same problems and pathology, it's your heterophyasis, okay? Um, again, the worms are attached on onto the intestinal wall because again they have suckers, no? And the suckers are used for attachment, okay? So hanisila again they attach to the intestinal wall, alright? So again, uh, generally the symptoms depend on worm burden. If they have worms, alright. If there are too many worms, then of course the symptoms are more severe. But if the worms are little, then light infections may happen. The patient may remain asymptomatic, okay? Now, for patients who are symptomatic, the main symptoms are diarrhea and colicky, abdominal pain, magsakit, no? Colicky. All right. Now, for heavy infections, there could be also mucous diarrhea because, again, the, the worms are attached onto the intestinal wall. So, it could lead to malabsorption, Japan, no? And magsiproduce of mucus, di ba? As we have mentioned. All right. And again, similar to uh, disease presentation of acid, uh, peptic disease or peptic ulcer disease. All right. Now, because again, the worms can attach deeply, no, can intense with the attachment <laughs> to the intestinal wall, and also since the eggs can also be um, expressed into the general circulation, all right, so possible ng eggs pero siyang spread to the other organs in the body. That's why it can be deadly, all right? So once the eggs are deposited into other tissues um, of the body, then they cause mga granuloma formation, okay? So they cause granulomas in the different organs such as the brain, spinal cord, or even heart. So in these organs, you can get mga symptoms related to the organ affected. So sa brain, there could be seizures, neurologic deficits, and even sa heart, it could lead to cardiac insufficiency. All right, because again, the granulomas formed from the eggs. So tumod sa eggs na na-transmit to these organs, okay, the eggs will elicit an immune response from the body, okay, in the organ. And um, produce ay mga granulomas. And these granulomas can cause, again, mga uh, kanang blockage, obstruction, or even uh, destruction of the tissue sa organ. That's why pwede siyang makakos o intense na mga symptoms. Okay? Now, in the Philippines, 15% of the fatal heart disease may be a result of heterophyte myocarditis. So, in the Philippines, your heterophyte heterophyte is endemic no? um, in the fishes, some of the fishes na mga freshwater. So, you have to be careful sa mga ginakauan, especially sa freshwater fish. Okay, <clears throat> all right. So it's it's found in the Philippines. We have it here. Okay, so that's for the symptoms. That's why it's considered to be deadly because again, uh, the eggs can be transmitted to other organs in the body and other tissues, and in those organs, it can cause severe damage also. All right. Okay. Ayan. Now for the laboratory diagnosis, uh, of course, the eggs are detected in the stool, and we can detect it by making wet mounts, of course. And we have to examine it under HPO because these eggs are quite small, so we need to examine it under HPO. Their eggs, as we have mentioned, are similar to clonorchis and metagonimus, uh, so we have to differentiate them correctly. And again, we have to look at other information from the patient, such as, again, history, um, area, kung asa and all that. All right. Now, concentration techniques, your sedimentation pa rin ang pinaka-recommended, your FECT formalin, because again, uh, these eggs are operculated, so they are heavy, so they will settle at the bottom. All right. Treatment of choice is still praziquantel. All right. Um, ang alternative is tetrachloroethylene. All right. So that's for heterophys, heterophys. Again, what you have to remember, the smallest fluke, according to some references, and the deadliest among the flukes. Von Sibod's fluke, ang common name, the intermediate host, snail, and your fish, and also the diseases, niyang perimakos. All right. Heterophys, heterophys. So that's the first of the heterophyd 
ng mga flukes. Alright. So before we proceed to metagoni much, do you have any questions? Ilan tayo na tayo sa steel province? I'm sweating in charot. Ayan. Any questions? Okay ba kayo dyan? Okay pa ba kayo? Okay na lang. Ano naman? Nandiyan pa ba kayo? <laughs> Alright? Yes, sir. Okay. So, go in. Alright, sige. Any questions? Any clarifications? Okay. Alright. So, we now proceed to the next heterophyte fluke, and that is your metagonimus yukogawai. Your metagonimus yukogawai is quite similar lang with your um, heterophyte heterophyte. But in terms of area niya in-affect, it's usually more common in the Far East, no? sa mga Japan, sa China, Korea, Trangapita. Now, according to CDC, siya ang smallest human fluke. Ayan. So, paano na to, sir? Okay, na-mention na nato ng heterophys ang smallest fluke. So, paano na yarn na metagonimus pala? So, same na siya with the Yoctophyma renale, if you can remember. <laughs> if ang question is which of the following is the smallest fluke, and then ang choice na kay heterophys, then we answer heterophys. Pero, if given ang duha, ito ba yung answer? Come on, siyang answer if given C duha. for Christ. C for Christ. Pwede pong A for Allah, B for Bathala, D for Dios. So, kinsa man yung i-choose, C for Christ pa rin. Now, all of them are very heavenly. Charot. Kinsa <laughs> man yung i-choose. So, yung answer if both of, the, uh, both of these are given. Kung unsa na sa libro, sir. <laughs> Kung unsa na sa libro. Okay. <laughs> all right. Or, man. So, kinsa man yung answer, heterophys or metagonimus? Hetero, sir. Hetero? Ay. <laughs> okay, sige. Alright, depende na na siya again sa question. Okay, so, if ang question is smallest fluke, and then given ang duha, siguro, nabot, ang ibogani ko actually, how will I answer that? Okay, possible mo ng duha. Pero let's establish lang yun na heterophid flukes, okay, heterophid, meaning family, heterophid flukes, sila yun ang mga smallest flukes affecting man, Okay. So, sila yun, heterophyte fluke. So, when you say heterophyte fluke, appeal na si heterophys and si metagonimus anak because family. Pero, kung di pangunta na yung specific na species, um, ato na lang yung answer sa so, mind. Mas hindi na ni Mugawas, no? Ano yung joke? Hindi na ni Mugawas. Hindi na ito ang sira, charot. I think, ano lang siguro. Some of the references na kung i-consult mang word, heterophys ang nasa book, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Pero sa CDC, mag-word kay Metagonimus Yokogawai. So, siguro if I will have to answer, ako yung answer na is Metagonimus Yokogawai. Kay, um, very specific yun siya na sa CDC. And sa CDC, lagi siya nakamention so far sa akong nabasa. And, um, basin, if, naka, if nakaabot sa CDC, ang imuhang tiga mag-question. So, meaning nag-research yun siya well. Okay? Kaya the fact na yung ibutang ang Metagonimus Yokogawai, it means na murag nag-research siya well sa iyang mga sources <laughs> sa iyang pagama sa question. But again, that's in cases na of conflict, no? Um, hopefully, wala lang sa inyong company or sa inyong boards buhon. Pero again, as I mentioned, di ba, sa boards, usually, they're very much uh, bookish and very kanang word for word na mukha-copy yun. So, if ang um, question, if ang um, question kay smallest human fluke ka na, kay na human na word, and that is found in CDC, you answer metagonimus. Pero if the answer ra kay, ang um, um, question ra kay smallest fluke, so, possible na heterophys. Depende sa phrasing of the question. Okay? Kaya usually, tingkuha po na board of examiners sa CDC. Okay? Katong, para sa ito, consistency of stool, di ba? Na ma-recover ang both trophozoites and cysts. Di ba? Itong answer kay. So, may answer na ito, ato. Your consistency sa stool na makuha ang protozoan, trophozoites, and cysts. It's. So, may na consistency. Soft. Ayan. Soft, no? Very good. So, gika na siya sa CDC. So, negosyo siya sa boards, no? Uh, March of 2021, yes. And January of 2021. So, um, sa CDC sila nikuha. So, tikuha sila sa CDC. Na site board. Okay? So, ayan. Pray over. Pray over. Prayers talaga. Alright? Okay. Ayan. So, that's for Betagonimus Yukogawai. Again, it's common in the Far East. So, mga China. No? Mga um, uh, Korea. Dito na kita. Alright. Now, as you can see, ang information is still similar with your... Um, with your heterophys, heterophys, the difference lang is the species of snail na pwedeng ma-affected ma no? sa so first intermediate host. Alright? Okay, so that's for metagonimus yokogawai. We go now to the adults. Again, as you can see, quite similar lang in appearance with your heterophys, heterophys. But these are quite larger compared to your heterophys adult. Alright? And iyahang ventral sucker, ayan, 
is found at the right side of the body. So meaning, if I siyang i-half, alright, mudrotaw line, midline axis, the ventral sucker is at the right, eto, kaning GA, that is your genito acetabulum. So for uh, metagonium sucogawa, you have ventral sucker is close to the genital pore. That's why it's called as genito acetabulum. Okay, ang yang acetabulum or your ventral sucker, okay, the other name for ventral sucker is acetabulum, all right? You have acetabulum close in proximity with your genital pore. That's why it's called genito acetabulum. Ayan, so that's just a right midline axis. So OS again, oral sucker, pH, pharynx, intestines, the egg found in the uterus, the waka testes, the occasion testes, and you have the ovary. Okay, ayan. So that's for metagonimus, your kogawai na adults. Now for the eggs, again, similar in appearance shapon with your heterophys heterophys, pero yung operculum is mas, mas obvious compared to heterophys heterophys. And similar siya with your CC nensis, uh, similar siya with heterophys na wala siya atong murag ga protruderic. Dili ni siya maungha, katong murag shaped appendage or small nub there is an opposite opercule. Alright? So, wala siya ana. Okay. Ayan. So, that's for metagonimus yukogawai. So, same ragya siya with heterophys na mature when laid. So, daghana na mga mature, daghana tang mature when laid. So, you have shock, di ba? S-H-O-C na pay M, metagonimus. You also have D for dicrocilium na tong lecture gahapon. So, ayan. Daghana sila. So, again, ang point lang is pag gawa sa eggs, no? Ang sulod sa eggs are mature or uh, developing larva agad agad. The miracidium. Okay, all right. So that's for metagonimus you call the white. So again, similar gapon in life cycle with your um, uh, heterophys heterophys fish gapon ang target. All right, and the eggs must first again be ingested by snails before mo hatch ang imuhang eggs para before mo gawas ang miracidium. Okay, so the eggs are first ingested by the snail. All right, and the eggs will then hatch. Okay, mo gawas ang miracidium. All right, so that's for metagonimus you call the white. For the symptoms and pathology, similar Japan with eight heterophys, uh, depending on worm burden. And eggs may also infiltrate the capillaries of the intestine and lymphatics and may be carried into other organs, myocardium, brain, spinal cord, and other tissues, where granulomatous reactions or emboli may occur. So it can still disseminate, so, uh, similar with your heterophys heterophys. All right. Now, lab DX nato similar methods with H heterophys. And treatment of choice is still praziquantil. And the uh, alternative is tetrachloroethylene. Okay, all right. So that's for the metagonimus you call the way. So those are for the heterophid flukes, the family of heterophids. So you have heterophys, heterophys, and metagonimus you call the way. So before I proceed to the next, do you have any questions, dears? All right. Again, on say common names, heterophys, heterophys. Okay, so my common names are heterophys, heterophys. Your, yes, Francis. Yes, Very good. Also, to Francis, dears. Huh? <laughs> Your, Von Sibods, Luke. Or na question, Francis. Wait, wala ka do. Pasensya. <laughs> Francis, yes. Naka question? Wala na, sir. Naingo na, sir. Ay, ay, so, sorry. Sorry, Francis. Okay, <laughs> pasenta. <laughs> all right, okay, sige. And again, what is the infective stage of all the trematodes except for schistosomes? Okay. What is the infective stage of all the trematodes except for schistosomes? Your? Metasarcaria, sir. <laughs> Very good. Munoz or Munoz, Charon. Okay, M. All right, so that's for um, the heterophyte flukes, okay? And we'll now proceed to the last of the intestinal flukes, your gastrodiscoides hominis. Your gastrodiscoides hominis is quite common in India, all right? So, sa Assam, sa India, and other parts of India, where it also occurs in pigs, okay? And the normal host good are the pigs, all right? For humans, uh, we get it again, similar Japan with the rest of the traumatodes, ingestion. Uh, its habitat is in the large intestine. Ayan, so please take note. So, tanang intestinal trematodes, ang gastrodiscoidus hominis asa makitan sa large intestine. Because the rest of your intestinal trematodes usually sa small intestine sila. But for gastrodiscoidus hominis, siya ang nasa large intestine. Please take note. Final host is kitaman. First intermediate host is your snail as always. Second intermediate host are freshwater fish or contaminated vegetation. 
So it's not yet established. Yahang life cycle is not yet well established. Okay. So they postulated lang na it's similar with the rest of the intestinal trematodes. All right. So pwedeng makuha sa fish or sa vegetation. All right. Now the reservoir hosts are pigs and other mammals that eat uh, the second trematode host. And infective stage and mode of transmission, again, similar on the other one. All right? So that's for gastrodiscoides hominis. Ayan. But for the adults, ayan, medyo dito ako na short. No? Kay medyo, it looks family. <laughs> it, looks fam it, looks, it looks familiar. No? Like, everything reminds me of him. <laughs> chaka lang, chaka, no? So, <laughs> nakaka-miss, charot lang. Chaka lang, oh my gosh, Mark. Okay, ayan. So, <laughs> The adults are bright pink in appearance, all right? It's pear-shaped or pyriform. <laughs> and a very, very important characteristic is this deep concavity, no? Medyo intense iyahang pagka-concave sa iyahang posterior end. So medyo broad, no? Medyo, ano yung kaya like, mm, very, ano, daw kaya siya lubot, yes, in another level, no? Deep concavity um, of the worm. And at the very posterior, pinaka-end, is this large ventral sucker. Kani siyang circle diri. This is the large ventral sucker, okay? This is the mouth, oral sucker, and this is the ventral sucker, all right? So, bright pink pag yung color. My gosh, it's so family. <laughs> it reminds me so much of something. <laughs> Ayan, may may nag-re-act? May nag Ah, okay. Sa mukha niyo matini. <laughs> Ayan. So, that is the ad. Okay. Sige na. Okay. So, ano. Nakakamiss. Charot. Ayan. So, that is the ad. No? Bright pink. Deep concavity. Alright? Intense ihang pagka... Um, intense ihang pagka concave. No? Like, intense with ihang pagka ganun. Alright? So, medyo gifted with just yung lubot. Ganun. Alright? So that's for the adults. Now take note again, it has a large, this one, large ventral sucker na asa pinaka posterior niya. Alright? So that's for the adults of gastrodiscoides hominis. Now for the eggs, ayan, the eggs are similar in appearance with your Fasciolopsis buski. Alright? But it's quite smaller and much slender. Alright? Uh, and for the color, it's quite greenish brown in appearance, operculated and immature when laid. So pag, pag gawas niya, no? Um, it's immature. Walay klaro na uh, merasidium na makita. So as you can see, parang sa ani, di ba? Marara siya dili klaro na mass, no? M-A-S-S. So marara siya, uh, wala kayo makita ng mga structures or anything, no? So it's immature when laid. Again, similar po with Fasciolopsis buski, no? It's also immature when laid. Alright? So Fasciolopsis buski, uh, similar egg with your gastrodiscoides hominis. Alright, same egg. Ayan, sorry. All right. Now, for the symptoms and pathology, of course, it's intestinal in origin. So, yung symptoms kay intestinal food. So, related to worm burden, in light infections, patient may be asymptomatic. While in heavier infections, there may be mucous diarrhea. Still the same. Because again, naka-attach sa imuhang walls of the intestine. Lymphocytes, plasma cells, and eosinophils may il infiltrate the mucosa. And at the attachment site, there may be lesions, all right, uh, with surface desquamation and that can lead to necrosis, all right? But again, your gastrodiscoidus hominis is quite uncommon. It's rare lang ang mga cases. And usually, um, they are residing or they can be found in India, all right? India, all right. Now, similar diagnostic methods with Fasciolopsis buski, and the treatment is your praziquantel pa rin, all right? So that's for all your intestinal flukes, all right? So before I proceed to the next, the pancreatic fluke, do you have any questions? As in you, at nasuk ko sa yung appearance. Dahil sa adult, sa ano dahil, gasho this ko, yun din is mabuhang ko. Alright, ayun. Sige. <laughs> Any questions? Again, kinsa ka nito ito ang Chinese liver fluke or the Oriental liver fluke? Kinsa man to. Chinese liver fluke? Oriental Lonarchist. Sinense. Lonarchist. Okay. Lonarchist. Don't forget that. All right, very good. So, muli siya, ako ang recall sa akong board exam. Igawas gud siya, dears, promise. As in, mga number 50 na ganyan ni Kapin sa akong board exam sa Micropara. So, pagbasa na ako ato, naka-ano siya ko na, Lord, thank you. Mahal mo pa rin pala ako. Charot, ganong level. Like, so, that's what I'm telling you, dears, na mga common names talaga. Very, ano na siya, one point lang yun sa board. So, wag nang mag-isip and do not waste it. Okay, dapat memorize with the common names. Ha? Memorize the common names by heart. All right? So, tama. Chinese liver fluke or oriental liver fluke, that is clonorchis sinensis. Okay. 
All right, again. Kinsa man tong ato ang ano? Von Sibod's fluke. Kinsa to siya? Von Sibod's fluke. Press the buzzer. Heter. Heter. Yes. All right. Heterophys, heterophys. All right. Heterophys times two. Ganun lang to. All right. Ayan. Sige. So, any questions before we proceed to the pancreatic fluke? Right? Okay. Sige. So, for the pancreatic fluke, we only have one, of course, that is urethrema pancreaticum. So, for the common name of urethrema pancreaticum, of course, it's a pancreatic fluke. So, it resides within the pancreatic ducts. Okay? Final hosts are sheep and cattle. Uh, accidental host kita, no man. First intermediate host is the snail, and the second intermediate host are insects, no, such as ants, grasshopper, mantis, or crickets. Infective stage is still metacercaria, and the mode of transmission is again ingestion parin, of the second intermediate host. So for us humans, accidental lang. So let's say nikaunta mga plants, no, like mga salads or um, vegetables that may have been contaminated with the insects na ay ants, na ay grasshoppers, so, wala, na, wala na to nakita, no? So possible, dito na to nakuha. Aside from that, there are areas in the world also that have mga dishes na raw ang grasshoppers, kinakaon, or cricket. So, ayun. So, possible dito nakuha. So, katong mga team join siguro sa una sa mga survivor Philippines, ganung level, no? But what if <laughs> nakakaon sila o mga... Di ba di kaon sila raw na mga crickets? Or si Bear Grylls sa Man vs. Wild? So, very, ano, very dangerous, no? Very, very prone to getting this parasite. No? So, again, that's Uritima pancreaticum. Second intermediate host are your ants, uh, grasshopper, mantis, and crickets. So similar siya with your dicrocilium dendriticum gahapo na lecture na ang second intermediate host kay mga ants. Okay, so same here with urethrema pancreaticum. Now for the adults, as you can see, it's more ovate and broader, alright? Meaning, hindi siya sister, kay broader man. <laughs> Funny no? Pakireact, salamat. <laughs> more ovate and <laughs> broader, alright, than your dendritico because if you look at our uh, lecture kahapon ang dicrocilium dendriticum is quite uh, slender okay but for uh, for urethrema pancreaticum it's much wider all right and important to take note the hokai shag oral sucker mm the hokai shag makba no for sucking oh my gosh no so oral sucker larger than your ventral sucker so oral diba as you can see dako and then the ventral is quite smaller all right so again uh it's Ovate, no, medyo oval siya. Mas wide and mas broad. Not broader, not a cystic. Chara, amen. <laughs> Ang pangit. <laughs> anyway, alright, ayan. Because again, dicrocilium dendriticum, yahang shaped ears, is very narrow or very slender. That's why it's also known as the lancet-shaped fluke or lanceolate fluke. That's your dicrocilium dendriticum, lancet-shaped fluke or lanceolate fluke. Alright, okay. So that's for the adults of urethrema pancreaticum. Again, oral sucker is very large, no? Very large, larger than your ventral sucker. Okay. Now for the eggs, similar in appearance with your D dendriticum, it's still operculated and mature when laid. So golden brown in appearance, no? And as you can see, ang sulod deers, nanakay makita mga structures. Di siya pareha sa egg sa fasciolopsis or sa fasciola, nang imura makita sa sulod kay murarag uh, unsegmented na any mass, mass, no? But for those that are uh, operculated and mature, as you can see, you, you already see mga structure. So, kanisha dears, kanin murag uh, pyriform shape. This is now the miracidium, no? So, pagawas ang sa environment, mo open ang operculum, mo gawas ang miracidium, okay? And mo swim siya to the snail, alright? Uh, or if makaon siya sa snail, again, pwede mo hatch and then mo gawas ang miracidium. Depende sa species, okay? Alright, so that's for. Uh, the eggs of urethrema pancreaticum. So again, it's mature when laid. So sa ito naman mature when laid, sa ito ang mnemonic. So shock, S-H-O-C, na pay M, metagonimus, uh, yung pagawai, letter D for dicrocilium dendriticum, and letter E for um, urethrema pancreaticum. So ito mnemonic for that is shock med. <laughs> shock med, wow, ayan. Very, very relevant, no? Shock men, okay? Shock men. Sila ni mga eggs na mature when late, no? Shock men, okay? Shock men. Alright, ayan, sige. Alright, or shock them. O, di ba, mas intense ang shock them. Mas nice ang shock them, no? Alright, sige. Shock them, shock men. Kung siya mga eggs na mature when late. Meaning, sa sunod sa eggs agad-agad is the miracidium, the first stage larva. Alright, okay. Now, for the disease, again, Depending upon just a mild, uh, depending upon just a worm burden, it may have mild symptoms if lighter or lesser on worms. Heavy infections, there may be 
gastrointestinal disturbances, abdominal distress, no? flatulence, vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation. And if intense, it can lead to jaundice also uh, because if possible, you can sa pancreas, pwede siyang musaka sa uh, bile duct, padulog sa liver, pwede ma-involve ang liver, and also systemic symptoms have been reported. Eosinophilia is quite rare. Ayan. Now for lab DX, detection of eggs in the stool, spurious infections must be ruled out. So again, same siya with I don't want to discuss with spurious infection. More than nematodes, no. When you say spurious infection, you may have gotten the eggs from the food that you eat. So, example, na a patient that you have liver, let's say liver or pancreas, na raw from an animal, and then by examining the stool, na kapit ang eggs. Example, na yuri trima pancreaticum. So that is a spurious infection. So how do we differentiate a spurious infection from a true infection? We then let the patient be liver-free or pancreas-free yahang diet. So, meaning, hindi sa siya mukhaon o mga food na ay liver or pancreas of an animal, okay, for about three days. And after three days, ito i-examine yahang stool, no? If the stool still contains the egg of the trematode, such as uritrema pancreatico, then that means that the patient really has a genuine infection of the trematode. Pero, if after three days, na walay kaon-kaon of liver or pancreas from an animal, if you have stool, well, any egg such a method, then that could mean that the infection of the person was a spurious infection, meaning nakuha niya siya ng ikawon. Pero wala gin siya nag wala gin siya infection sa sulod. All right, I hope na get to. I hope na get siya ha between sa spurious and sa genuine infection. Okay, all right. Now for the treatment, again, um, you may use again treatment of choice is praziquantel, and alternative is triclobendazole. All right, okay. So that's for the pancreatic flu. No, that's uh, one flu plan. Okay, so your trima pancreatico. All right, okay. So before we proceed to the lung flukes, all right, do you have any questions? And Javier, akong broader na joke. Thank you, Ron, sa paghahaha. Okay, sige. All right. Any question before we proceed to the lung flukes? Oh, sis. Sige. Salamat, sis. Okay, all right. Any questions uh, before we proceed to the lung flukes, or the last uh, group of flukes for today? All right. Okay, the gets lang. Again, kinsa to ang Chinese liver fluke. Sige, bahala na yun. Sige, balik-balik. Chinese liver fluke, your? Conor Kessinensis. Yes. Nagbalik-balik ko until murag kasuka ko na mo sa point na murag kanagan murag shocks. Sige na mo, balik-balik, Ani. I don't want it anymore. Like, nabot na siya sa point na sa boards here, sa review, na inana na ako na-feel. Okay, murag, not not that I'm ready na yun or like murag kanag I know everything. It's just that murag Kapuya na kasi nagbalik-balik. <laughs> no, murag, nakakasuka na. No, no, murag, nakakasuka. Di ba, if too much naman yung gani, usahay maka, makasuka na ka, or makachoke, ah, or maka, makasakal na siya, bainan na siya na feeling. So, once you review for the boards, murag, mabuto mo na na points. So, mga yung sigong balik-balik, so, murag, ah, kanina po, like, shucks, gano'n. Nalang siya yung times po na murag, mag-board exam na tabi para mahuman na. Tsaka, <laughs> hinaan na level. Pero, pag-abot, pag, pag, pag umanak ka, Pag mahuman na kagkatulog, dito na po makarealize ka na shocks, diba ni Corwebi? Ganun lang. So, inanay mo mga feeling. Pero, yes, muna siya, muna siya itong target, ha? At ito yung balik-balik ko na yung mga, ka na yung mga press the buzzer until ka na makasuka na yun mo. Okay, alright. So, again, Chinese liver fluke, your clonorchis sinensis. Your lancet, lancet, lancet-shaped fluke or lanceolate fluke, kinsa to siya? C, letter D, your, yes, <laughs> And there was silence. Your dicrosilium dendriticum. Okay, so na siya sa gahapon na pre-recorded lecture here. So pakilantaw ha, sana naman, sana naman. Okay, all right. And again, your, um, so come on, the mga flukes. All right, pero ito siya so far. All right, so again, any uh, any questions before we proceed to the last flukes for today? Your lung flukes? All right, okay lang, G lang. All right, sige. So we now proceed to the last of our discussion for today, your lung flukes. Now for the lung flukes, ang ato na yung target is your paragonimo species. Your paragonimo species, again, consists, no, by the name itself, they have a lot of species, all right? About 10 species that infect humans, all right? So example of that is the Kelicotti, all right? Kelicotti, funny ng name, charot. Paragonimus kelicottii, or cotti, endemic in North America. No, it is, it's a growing infection. It's a growing parasite in the America. Begin na siya mga infections na cause dito. Um, it can also cause infections in North and South America. And you also have P. siamensis, uh, the other species in the Philippines that causes paragonimiasis. So it can be found in cats, but the name itself, siamensis, diba? So, uh, but 
bahalag dagan pang species no bahalag dagan pang species of paragonimus that can cause infection ang pinaka common yun and majority of the infections are of course caused by no other than paragonimus westermanni ayan and that is our focus for this this topic no or for this section so paragonimus westermanni again it's endemic in the philippines no it's endemic in sorsogon not only in sorsogon but a lot of regions also nalimot lang ko ta for nasa berizario dagan kayo regions endemic ang paragonimus westermanni so we have it here all right it causes endemic hemoptysis meaning you are living in an area na ay paragonimus and you develop uh, sudden no coughing with blood all right endemic hemoptysis okay all right na blood imuhang cough or phlegm and it may exhibit symptoms similar to tuberculosis ayan so tb like symptoms imuhang paragonimus westermanni okay now common name is the oriental lung flu ayan please take note ha oriental lung 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 flu all right now habitat is your lungs of course the final host is man reservoir host dogs cats Paratenic hosts are wild boars, no wild pigs, monkeys, and other small mammals. Accidental host kita, man. First intermediate host is your snail, Antemelania species. And second intermediate host are the crabs, no crabs, crayfish, and lobsters. Infective stage is still the same, metasarcari, and motor transmission is ingestion of raw or undercooked na second intermediate host. So kana mohiling mo kano crabs dira, crayfish, lobsters, ayan. Be careful. You have to make sure that it's well cooked, no. It's really cooked because again, that's the source of infection for Paragonimus westermanni. Now, in the Philippines, medyo common siya because, of course, in our areas, different regions in the Philippines, we have our own dishes, di ba? Mga delicacies. And we have food uh, in which uh, ang mga crabs kay raw. Like example, kanarang kinilaw, oh my gosh, ang sarap. And you also have mga sinugba, no? mga inana. Dili magud ma fully cooked kaayo ang meat if, if ever mag sinugba niya. Medyo short lang of, of time na cooking. So, Possible ito siya nakuha, alright? And that's why it's endemic here, no? Parang sarap ng kinilaw siya. So, okay, diba? So, <laughs> that's why it's endemic in the Philippines. Because we have food, mga dishes also, where kung asa siya pwede makuha, no? Ayan. So, that's for Paragonimus westermanni. Okay, alright. Oriental lung flu. Please take note, alright. Now, your adults, as you can see, is plump, no? Medyo buso, QT. Ayan. Avoid reddish-brown, yung appearance. And they are usually found encapsulated in the lungs, all right? So in once inside the lungs, the worms will be encapsulated, meaning mo produce la own capsule, all right? Mo resides la own capsule, all right? Now it resembles a coffee bean, mo rarasong coffee bean, ayan, sa mga ano dyan, coffee lovers, ayan. Para gawin mo sinyong bestie, ayan, coffee bean, iyahang appearance or iyahang shape. And the tegument or the outer covering of the worm is covered with spines, okay? Na siya spines. Now here is the um, parts, as you can see, iyahang cecum or intestine, Sa kilid kay spiral, no? Very distinct. Ayan. Ovary and then the testes. You have the uterus here. The ventral sucker nasa tunga. And the excretory bladder. And of course, oral sucker nasa tubangan. Alright? So that's for the adults. Paragonimus westermanni. Again, the intestine. Cecum. Ayan. Cecum. Katuma na siyang, ano diba? Elbow. Chara. Chaka. <laughs> cecum. And then sa kilid or spiral. No? Cecum. <laughs> ayan. is the intestine of the traumatos. Ayan. So cecum. <laughs> okay, ayan. I should stop making jokes at talaga. Oh my gosh. Ayan, so that's for the adults. Okay, again, coffee bean shape. So, very easy lang to remember sa mga coffee lovers. Kay coffee bean shape, si Paragonimus Westermani na yan. So, be careful sa inyong mga ginagamit na coffee bean. Basta hindi ay Paragonimus Westermani na adult na na. What if mag-grinding nyo siya ba? Yan, magutang sa coffee. Charot na. Chakara. So, again, <laughs> resembles a coffee bean. Alright. Now, for the eggs, your eggs is still operculated, alright? And immature when laid, alright? It has an operculum, alright? Operculum na asa front or nasa taas. And opposite the operculum is a thickening na ibaga na area. And that is known as the boss, no? B-O-S-S. Boss. O, oh, diba? By Fifth Harmony, charot. Ayan. So, R-I-P Fifth Harmony, M-E. So, operculum ang covering and opposite that is your boss or your uh, thickening. Alright. Now, this egg, your egg of Paragonimus westermanni is sometimes confused with another egg of another parasite and that is the tapeworm dilatum. So please take note dears ha, your dilatum is a tapeworm, dili siya trematod, it's a tapeworm, cestod, okay? Now, iyahang eggs, they look similar, alright? Please take note. But, ang difference lang, ang eggs ay muhang dilatum, wala siya shoulders, itong murag kani mga uh, protrusions or naglabaw, naglabaw diri, di ba, sa operculum, sa paragonimus, uh, wala siya shoulders, alright? 
and wala pong shine thickening diba sa kabantay mo medyo smooth lang iyahang opposite ends over kilo all right all right so that's for the d latum egg okay but for paragonimos again claro ang opercular shoulders kani kani murag mga love out diri sa upper kilo and then the thickening at the biggest end which is known as boss b o s s all right but again if a question kay eggs of paragonimos letter mani are often confused with the eggs of letter a diba so atong answer ana press the buzzer your d lato okay please take note diphylobothrium latum which is a tape worm all right sige Okay, now we continue uh, with the life cycle. Now, the life cycle, of course, we get it from eating, uh, I don't frogs, eating crabs, okay? Crabs, lobster, crayfish that contains the metasarcaria. So, pagkaon ato sa metasarcaria, dears, no, madigest ang metasarcaria, mugawas ang metasarcaria. So, magstart ni number six, ayan. Metasarcaria will exist in the duodenum, meaning mugawas siya, no, sa iyang egg. The metasarcaria will then migrate, all right, to the intestinal wall, padunong sa peritoneal, cavity or abdominal cavity. Pupadayin siyang migrate until maabot siya sa ipong diaphragm and then padulong sa pleural cavity. And finally, sa lungs. Now, inside the lungs, they reside in the bronchioles, alright? And in the lungs, the adults become encapsulated, alright? And katong mga capsule or cyst na this time sa adult na trematodes, they can produce eggs, alright? And these eggs are presented to the bronchioles, alright? And these bronchioles, of course, ang eggs Pwede siyang magawa sa sputum if mukha ang patient or pwede po siyang maswalo balik padulong sa intestine ang yung eggs. That's why the eggs can be uh, found in the feces and sputum. Alright? Now, in the feces, again, malibang ang patient, no? the eggs will um, uh, will be in contact with water. Alright? And then makao na po siya sa snail. Alright? And then the life cycle goes on. Gawas ang cercaria from the snail. And then muato siya, muato ang cercaria si mukhang crabs and crayfish or lobsters. And then finally, may mong metasarcaria, and then the cycle goes on. Alright? So here's the picture. Again, the eggs are fast in feces, okay? And then, uh, Miracidia will hatch from the egg, and then what is a snail, alright? And the uh, larval stages happen to the snail. Cercaria is released, which then swims padulong sa imuhang shrimp, uh, sh sorry, kanong shrimp, sa imuhang crayfish or mga lobsters or crabs, and it becomes a metasarcaria. And this metasarcaria is then what we eat, alright? And again, in adults, uh, makita ng adults sa lungs, alright? They encapsulate in the lungs and they produce eggs, alright? Uh, and the eggs will be passed into the bronchioles and then makita sa sputum, alright? Or maswalo balik pa dun sa intestine, okay? And that's the life cycle of your Paragonimus westermani, alright? Now, uh, we go na to the symptoms and pathology. Again, as I mentioned, di ba, migrate ang larval forms, ang imuhang merasidium. Kani siya, it will not cause any infection, alright? And if the larva remains in the abdomen, meaning dira siya mwado sa lungs, it can cause mga intestinal symptoms like uh, abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and eosinophilia. Now, um, once ma-reach na siya sa peritoneal cavity, alright, dito na siya mo-produce o mga hemorrhage and leukocytic infiltrates. So once ma siya sa lungs, it can cause pulmonary disease, and this is the most common presentation of paragonimiasis, no? Um, again, the adults become encapsulated na fibrotic capsule, alright? And infiltration of white blood cells, neutrophils and eosinophils. Now, again, this capsule, mugawas ang eggs, padlong sa bronchios, and makita sa sputum ang eggs. And that's why, di ba, the sputum is described as having an iron fillings, ayan, iron fillings na appearance. And these iron fillings are the cluster of eggs sa paragonimus, alright? Now, again, the sputum is also described as having a rust-colored sputum, rusty sputum, viscous blood-tinged sputum, all right, with a foul fish odor. So, langsa, langsa yung mohang sputum, all right? Okay. And of course, because of that, it can lead to chest pain and mga chest discomfort. Now, the eggs, all right, because again, di kan sa lungs, pwede siyang matransmit by circulation, uh, by the circulatory system to the other body sites. And similar so with heterophys, once na sa other body sites, the eggs will cause granuloma formation or embolus, or mga embola. Alright? Now again, um, for pulmonary disease, uh, the patient exhibits chest discomfort and chest symptoms. And these symptoms are quite similar to that of tuberculosis or bronchial asthma. That is why your paragonimus westermani is frequently, sige good siya misdiagnose as pulmonary tuberculosis. Especially in patients, na gikan sa mga places na endemic for both paragonimus and tuberculosis. So you have to be very careful yun um, sa pag-differentiate. No? 
because a patient may experience the same symptoms pero possible na PTB siya or paragonimus. So how do we uh, differentiate? We have to look at history kaya po. If the patient has a history of eating raw or undercooked na mga crabs, crayfish, or lobster prior to chest symptoms, then that could possibly indicate a paragonimus westermanni infection. Pero kung wala, then possible po na PTB siya. Alright? So we have to uh, be very careful. Especially if may mumong doctor soon. Ayan. So be careful sa inyong pag-diagnose. Alright. Okay. Um, light infections, of course, may be asymptomatic. Alright. Now, as I mentioned, because the eggs, di ba, can be transmitted by the circulatory system from the lungs to the other areas in the body, it can reach the brain. Alright? And this is the most serious complication of paragonimiasis. Quite, although this is rare, no, but the condition can be deadly, all right? Because the worms can uh, be found in the brain, all right? And the worms can produce eggs in the brain. And similar to the lungs, once in the brain, they form capsules, no? They encapsulate themselves and produce cerebral hemorrhage, edema, and meningitis. So symptoms included are, of course, neurologic symptoms. And if it's it can lead to death, all right? Now, very important, uh, it can cause Jacksonian epilepsy or Jacksonian seizure. So when you say Jacksonian epilepsy or seizure, it's a type of seizure na one area of the brain lang ang affected. The patient is still conscious, pero nag-seizure na siya sa sulod. Okay? Uh, di siya pa sa ubang seizures na intense yun. Alright? So one area of the brain lang ang nagka-seizure. Okay? Ayan. So that's Jacksonian epilepsy. So specific sites of the brain include mga cortex, cerebellum, etc. Uh, parts of the brain. And when a worm dies, of course, the capsule, kung asa siya sulod, it can lead to or it can develop mga necrotic material. So it can really be deadly, okay? But again, this is quite rare din naman for paragonimus. But once in the brain, it can cause uh, severe symptoms, no? So death, um, possible uh, sequelae or complication once ang paragonimus masulod sa brain. All right. Now, paragonimiasis and other body sites, of course, pwede siyang mag-transmit to other body organs such as your lymph nodes, heart, kidneys, etc. And again, the main pathology or the main cause as to why the other organs may cause severe symptoms is because of the eggs, no? Ang eggs ang nakakos sa pathology. Kaya disseminate ang eggs to the other organs. And these eggs will elicit or will um, induce, no? An inflammatory response, a granulomatous reaction in the organ kung asa siya nabuta, alright? So, ni mga granulomas found in the organs that could damage the tissue in the organs, okay? Alright, so that's for the symptoms and pathology of paragonimiasis. All right. Now, for the lab BX, of course, if a patient, example, my doctor mo, ayan, puhuan, puhuan, and then a patient na nag-present to chronic cough, uh, chest pains, and mga hemoptysis, meaning na bloody ang cough, and then uh, nasa sa area na endemic for paragonimus, then you must suspect the patient of having paragonimiasis. All right. But again, you all have to be careful. Uh, trace good sa history sa patient and look at mga lab tests, no? Stool exam niya, if na by eggs makitaan, sputum na by eggs na makitaan before you diagnose yun na paragonimus siya. Okay, alright. Now, specimen again is sputum. Again, you may add 3% sodium hydroxide, as we have mentioned, to digest mucus para makitaan yun ang eggs. And again, pwede po siya ma-recover sa stool. Alright. Now, in light infections, up to 7 sputum specimens may be required because again, para multiple specimens are needed para mas ma-recover ang eggs. Because again, light infections lang. Diagno diagnosis is based on sputum and so examination of the eggs. Charcot leading crystals, again, may be seen. And again, as mentioned, it can be frequently misdiagnosed as pulmonary tuberculosis. So since a sputum pag siya makita and your PTB is also diagnosed through acid fast staining of sputum, pwede ma-destroy ang eggs pag subject mo ang sputum to Zeal Nielsen uh, acid fast staining. Alright? So that's why you have to be very careful. You have to diagnose uh, it correctly, alright? And very, very accurately, okay? Ayan, thank you. Now, of course, for sedimentation techniques pa rin ang preferred because again, these eggs are heavy. Ayan, because again, they are operculated. Radiography and scans, of course, cerebral sa brain, makakita mo grape-like clusters. Ayan, grape-like clusters in one area of the brain. And uh, some discussions or some describe it as soap bubbles. Sumar siya mga bubbles sa soap. Immunodiagnostic test, you can use complement fixation to diagnose active infections. Intradermal test, immunoelectrophoresis, the classic methods. And the newer ones, immunoblotting and ELISA, the more sensitive and more specific. And of course, molecular methods, your lab. Okay, na method. Treatment of choice is still praziquantel or triclabendazole. All right. So again, grape-like cluster appearance. Ayan. Kinsa ganitong bacteria na iyahang appearance kay similar to clusters of grapes? Kinsa ganitong? Yes, use. All right. Bilis, ha? 
press the buzzer again, magaling. That's correct. The staphylococcus sign, you know? The staphylococcus species, yeah. That's why yung hangalan kay staphylo, because similar sa two clusters of grapes. Okay, all right, I can see. So that's for Paragonimus westermani. And for the last of the Paragonimus species, you have Paragonimus mexicanus. So nasa pangalan na, it infects a majority of patients from Mexico and South America. So it can cause subcutaneous nodules or mga abdominal nodules. Eggs, quite similar in appearance, Japan, with your Paragonimus westermani, operculated and eye shoulders, thick-shelled, brownish-yellow, and unembryonated. All right? Usually, the other Paragonimus species, aside from Paragonimus westermani, sila usually ang mo um, spread to other organs, no? Uh, and can cause mga ectopic, meaning outside the lungs, or other uh, organs na mga infections. All right? So, ang mga ubang Paragonimus species. All right. And that's all, yes, for our lung flukes and our discussion for today then. All right. So uh, before we leave and before we end, do you have any questions? Any clarifications? 